One of the most feel-good baseball stories in recent memory came in 2016 when the Chicago Cubs rode the backs of their young players to smash a century-long curse and walk away as world champions. The core of the team came in their infield, which featured three all-stars all under the age of 27 in Chris Bryant, Addison Russell, and Anthony Rizzo, while having future all-stars Wilson Contreras and Javier Baez filling the other spots. It was a win that most baseball fans look back fondly on, but ever since winning the World Series, Javier Baez has remained one of the most polarizing figures in all of baseball. But why is that? Is this a case of someone stirring the pot too much, or simply another energetic player being hated on for having too much fun? Over the past year or so, I've seen a trend mentioning how bad or overrated Baez has become, so I wanted to see whether they are valid or simply hopping on a trend. I wanted to look over his career and learn what contributes to his approach and what to make of him. If you enjoyed this video, it'd mean the world if you liked and subscribed below. Now let's get into it. Born December 1st, 1992, Javier Baez would grow up in Puerto Rico before his family would move to Jacksonville, Florida in 2005 so his sister could get medical help for her spina bifida condition. Baez would attend Arlington Country Day School and would sport a 463 batting average with 9 doubles, 13 home runs, and 60 RBIs all in just 25 games in his sophomore season. But his real breakout would come in his senior year where he posted an unbelievable 770 one batting average with 20 doubles, 22 home runs, 52 RBIs, and zero walks in 30 games his senior year. He went 64 for 83 while having a 1.807 slugging, which would finally gain him the respect he deserved from scouts and helped him be the ninth overall selection by the Cubs in the 2011 MLB draft. Chicago Cubs select Javier Baez. Throughout the minors, Baez always showed quite the potential, posting impressive stats in both fielding and power while the only knock on his game being his discipline at the plate. This is obviously something we'll address more later, but it is clear that it's always been a part of his game. He would be named the best defensive infielder in the Cubs system by Baseball America and receive the minor league award for best minor league game of the year for a four home run performance in the 2013 minor league season. With multiple major league caliber middle infielders on the Cubs roster, he would practice at second and third to increase his utility to find his way to the big leagues. After two short stints in 2014 and 2015, injuries would open a path to regular playing time. He would bounce from short, third, and second base finding any way into the lineup while having a good glove anywhere he played. Baez would prove to be one of the final pieces in the Cubs World Series roster as he would play 62 games at third, 59 games at second, and 25 games at short while hitting 273, 314, and 423 with 14 home runs and 59 RBIs. The Cubs were playing musical chairs with their position players as not only Baez played around the field, but his teammates Chris Bryant, Wilson Contreras, and Ben Zobris all found themselves without an everyday position while still remaining in the everyday lineup. At the deadline, the 59 and 39 Cubs would trade top prospect Glaber Torres for Aroldis Chapman to secure their bullpen and go all in for a championship. After that day, the Cubs would only lose 19 more games for the rest of the season and finish 103, 58, and 1. And one? Yes, there are ties in baseball as on September 29th, the Cubs and Pirates game was suspended due to rain at 1-1 in the sixth inning. It marked the first time in baseball since 2005 as Major League Baseball deemed it a no contest immediately with the postseason just around the corner and no time to reschedule. The Cubs would take down the Giants and Dodgers on their way to the World Series while Baez won co-NLCS MVP alongside John Lester hitting 318 with 5 RBIs, 4 doubles, and two stolen bases, one of which was stealing home in the first game of the series. He would even register an out while playing first base against the Giants while Anthony Rizzo was crashing in for a bunt. In one of the most exciting World Series in recent history, the Chicago Cubs would match up against the team formerly known as the Cleveland Spiders in an underdog v underdog matchup that promised to come away with a good ending. After being down 3-1 in the October Classic, the Cubs would fight tooth and nail to come back and clinch a World Series after going to extra innings in Game 7. Championship brought to the Cubs finally put an end to a 71-year-long curse put on the team by William Cianis and his pet goat in 1945. Javier Baez would go on to retire after the 2016 season. In fact, the entirety of the Major League Baseball decided to retire as they deemed the 2016 season the greatest ever and they all walked away as friends. The end. 
I'm just kidding. But what would be a great cap to a multi-year long team effort to walk away with a championship would only be the beginning to Javi's career and would be far from his peak. It is inevitable that a championship team loses core players after winning it all, but the Cubs were able to keep a positive record for the next four seasons with a 56% winning percentage and retain the majority of their young core that took them over the top. Baez would start to find his footing in 2017 when he slashed 273, 317, and 480 with an OPS plus of 102 while hitting 24 doubles and 23 home runs. He would move from bouncing around between third, second, and short to just splitting time in the middle infield as the reigning MVP Chris Bryant would main third base for the foreseeable future. By his biggest strengths came in his power to hit for extra bases and ability to tag players at an exceptionally high level while avoiding tags on the base paths. The 2017 Cubs would go on to lose to the Dodgers in the NLCS but were quite successful in not falling into the World Series hangover that plagued so many other teams. Baez would follow a solid 2017 campaign by achieving his peak in 2018, finishing second in MVP voting, posting a slash line of 290, 326, 554, with 40 doubles, 34 home runs, and led the league in RBIs with 111. He had a knack for flashy plays and was always one to put emotion and passion while doing something spectacular, but it could occasionally come back to bite him. Speaking of the things that come back to bite him, Baez has always been the definition of being hot and cold. He posts some of the best highlights and lowlight reels while remaining entertaining in both as he can truly make some of the best and worst plays you've ever seen on the baseball diamond. The most common error in his game comes in the form of his swings at pitches out of the zone. His lack of discipline has led him to post some of the worst walk to strikeout rates in modern era as his career strikeout and walk rates sit at considerably above and below league averages respectively. Javier is emblematic of what the biggest critics of modern baseball dislike. He strikes out a lot, he lets his emotion get the best of him sometimes, and has had moments of not focusing on the fundamentals of the game. This has led to the tag of one of the most overrated players in baseball. For someone capable of being one of the best players in the world, it leaves you scratching your head when you see him swing at a pitch that's not even in the same area code. While the saying, you can't walk off the island, was attributed to Dominican-born players, I think it's fair in saying that Javier Baez physically embodies the idea of this quote. Latin countries have produced some of the best bad ball hitters in MLB history. Vlad Sr. could get hits off of pitches that fell in the dirt, and when the late great Roberto Clemente asked about why he swings at bad pitches, he just said, it's not a bad ball if I can hit it. Latino players produce some of the most entertaining styles of baseball, and while Baez has not had the same production from this style as the two Hall of Famers mentioned have, it is clear where he learned the tendency of being more aggressive at the plate came from. Baez continued his MVP runner-up 2018 campaign with a step down in production but was still at an all-star level in 2019 when he finally found himself as the everyday shortstop. In the offseason, he would be named the MLB The Show 20 cover athlete, putting him at the center of the baseball discussion and becoming one of the faces of the game. The shortened 2020 season would prove to be difficult at the plate for Baez, but he was finally recognized for his top-tier defense as he received that year's gold glove at the shortstop position. The 2021 season would be the last on the Cubs for the World Series trio of Bryant, Rizzo, and Baez as they faced an 11 game loss streak that turned a playoff run to a fire sale in a matter of two weeks. He would find himself traded just hours before the trade deadline to the Mets, where he would join forces with childhood friend Francisco Lindor. The two would make for an exciting middle infield after Lindor returned from injury, and after booing his own fans, Baez would see quite the leap in production on the year. Baez would go from a good but not great OPS plus of 105 to an elite mark of 140. While exciting, his tenure with the Mets was short lived and he would leave the team in the following offseason and enter free agency. He would end up signing with the Detroit Tigers for six years and 140 million. It came as a bit of a surprise due to the Tigers struggling to achieve a winning record since 2016. Their hopes were that he would solidify the shortstop position while raising a young core around him and contend in an overall weak division. They have so far struggled in their attempt to grow the talent around him as Tigers top prospects Casey Mize and Spencer Torkelson are still yet to meet their potential. Mize has shown great promise while on the field but has only thrown 188 innings in the three years since he's entered the league and currently hasn't even appeared in 2023. The former first overall pick Torkelson has yet to adjust to big league pitching but has at least shown improvement from his disappointing rookie season. Both players are incredibly young and have more than enough time to find their way into the league but their development has left a question mark around signing a shortstop 
with a profile such as Javier Baez, whose competing years may be in the past when the Tigers are finally ready to field a playoff caliber team. Baez has posted his two worst full seasons of his career at the plate, excluding 2020, in his first years with the Tigers and has continuously found himself in hot water. His role as a veteran is to show the young core the right way to play the game, and he has missed out on fundamentals on multiple occasions. His defense has remained solid at the shortstop position, but is not close to the kind of glove he was putting on field in Chicago. In 2023, Baez has continued to struggle and is starting to fall out of favor among the team. Javier was placed on the bereavement list on August 13th so he could return home to Puerto Rico to attend his grandfather's funeral. He returned to the lineup on August 18th but has missed six games since returning as of September 9th due to an illness or soreness. He has always remained close to his family and it is more than possible he hasn't been physically or mentally 100% for some time now, leading to a dip in production. Javier found himself always defending his teammates anytime tensions got hot, the most notable being his ongoing feud with Amir Garrett. The feud started in 2018 after Amir celebrated striking out Baez and would continue to celebrate striking out Schwarber in 2019 and began walking towards Rizzo after striking him out early 2021. This sparked Javier jumping on the field to confront him for taunting his team and starting a benches clearing shouting match. After closing Using a game out on July 4th, Garrett wished the Cubs goodbye by sweeping them off the field as a cap to their series. This would set the stage for one of Baez's most watched and entertaining highlights when the Reds found themselves in a tough situation in the first game of the following series against the Cubs with bases loaded in the bottom of the ninth. Before even stepping into the box, Baez began shouting at Garrett before swinging first pitch and driving in the winning run with what would normally be a flyout while sweeping the Reds off the field and walking to first base. Ironically, this was only the first game of the series between the two teams, and the Reds would go on to win every other game in the series. After being division rivals for five years in the NL Central, apart from Baez being on the Mets for 47 games, both players would pack their bags for the AL Central and once again spark the disdain for one another on the field. As of August 8, 2023, Baez is 4 for 8 with three home runs and a walk against Garrett, but hopefully we'll be able to see more of them against each other very soon. Baez has appeared in both the 2017 and 2023 World Baseball Classics representing Team Puerto Rico while playing second both competitions. He's shown highlight defense in both tournaments, having a career highlight when he had a no-look tag. Side note, what is Nelson Cruz doing stealing against Yadier Molina? He's performed very well while helping his country perform at a very high level in both tournaments. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I have seen a lot of videos commenting on Javier's decline as a player and how he's being paid far more than what he's worth. I don't blame any of the channels I showed thumbnails of, as I think all the points I've heard made are fair, but I do find it interesting he has become the face of the most overrated player in the MLB since he started showing success with the Cubs. At his peak, Javier can compete with anyone. He has a powerful bat and one of the best gloves at shortstop in the entire league. I think he is a player who needs to be on a contending team to consistently find himself in playoff races to get the best out of him. Just look at his time with the Mets. While the 40 games is a very small sample size, I do think it shows Javier lives for the spotlight in high-stakes baseball games. Just this past year in the 2023 WBC, Baez posted a slash line of 368 with no walks, obviously, and his 667 slugging. I hope the Tigers can rally a team around him while he's still under contract, but the current timeline may not be there for that to happen. I hope that the Tigers can make substantial moves to help him play meaningful ball games, or he finds his way onto a team that is already in contention, because a motivated Baez is one of the most entertaining players on the field.